Hey guys, welcome to the stream. And guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen, I have here with me, Emir, a tester's version of the game. So a tester's version of this game was provided to me by the developer, which is Ronshan. Uh, and this game is a city building 4X multiplayer, supposedly kind of slightly an MMO persistent server thing sort of game. And it's about pigs with clothes. Okay, okay, so generally it's something new, it's something new, and despite first appearances, I feel like I should uh, clarify that this game is not a classic city builder in, in the vein of the impression. So it is isometric, it's got that 2D style, it looks really nice and it looks very similar, but it doesn't use the walker mechanic. It does not use the walker mechanic, which is very important to say. And also, this build I am playing is very, very sort of early. Now, the developer, Ronshan, has been working on this game on and off for about five years, full time for about two years. And it's just getting to a part where it's, I would say, it's coming out of alpha, going into a closed beta. But at this point, there's still lots of bugs, some graphical glitches, missing text, uh, all sorts of things like that. All sorts of things like that. But generally, it's playable and it's still interesting and fun to, to play. Uh, and also, Let's jump into it. First things first, let me just show you the options menu. Currently, it's a little light here, but there's some interesting things like video grain. So the, the visuals are sort of this digital painted style. Putting video grain on puts it, gives it a little bit of a texture, makes it look a bit more, I'd say, realistic, a little bit more uh, in there. Like if I, you see here, the, it applies a little bit of grain. I'm not sure if you're going to see this on the video, but I'm going to turn it off because video compression sort of puts its own video grain onto it. And also all that little uh, little light effects like that can cause artifacting in the video. So I'm going to leave that off. But besides that, we already have some separate audio sliders. Probably need a couple more there. Uh, game settings, just language for now. Resolution, it can set to pretty much anything. But anyway, let's go ahead and start a new game here. So I'm going to just start a new game here. And it's going to be the Zaka Lighten League. I love that name. Got that name from Stellaris. And technically, this is a multiplayer game, but you can play it solo. I'm just going to make a private game here. Set the Leave the max players as five or whatever. Game settings is currently official, and game type is real-time and persistent. Now, real-time and persistent... Uh, real time is sort of for small games where you host like, like local hosts with a couple friends. Persistent is meant to be for up to like a hundred players on a 24 seven server. But right now, as things stand, on, you can only host things yourself. The, you can actually shut down the game, but leave the, the game or the, as a host, you can leave it running in the background so people can keep joining and stuff. But everything is self hosted at this point. So I'm going to go real time. And map types, we have tiny, small, regular, large. I'm going to go for small, I guess. Terra, Pangea, Alpha, uh, Tropical. I really like Tropical. I really like the Tropical settings. Uh, so I'm going to go for Tropical. Uh, <laughs> I just love how the Tropical maps look and procedural and all of that. So let's go ahead and start this game. Uh, how are you guys doing? Lala Kisis, Tanamasar, Thomasmil, Lizaran, Sajuk, Masake Inoue. You guys doing okay? Ah, so here we go, launching up a new game. We get to sort of do a little setup here. So you can see this, this as an early build, some things are not incredibly clear. They're always sort of functional and not always sort of explained. But there is a tutorial if you're loading this up for the first time. I'm just looking at some pig names here. Leofric Prold Pork, Eugene Prowled Fist. Leal Iron Pride, Gronky Clumsy Fist, Tearwit Fat Belly, Groiky Green Pig, Hyat Dirty Truffle. Uh, so there's all those names, but I'm just gonna go for Gamerzak because that's my name. <laughs> uh, so in terms of designs, there's sort of just preset designs here. I have a personal favorite. I like this one. <laughs> And for eyes, there's some there's some interesting, crazy ones, <laughs> but I have I have my own personal favorites. Uh, we could always go for this, I guess. But uh, for now, I'm going to go for this. I think it looks really cool. For the snout, we have a variety to choose from, and I'm going to go for the one that sort of fits this face the best, I think, which is that one. And mouth, we have a few different mouths as well. And keeping with my calm demeanor, I'm just going to go for that. Do you see the resemblance? Okay. Uh, for our empire name, this is going to be the Zakalitan League. And we get to choose a little design here. I'll go for the crown. There's a few to choose from. 
but we'll go for the crown because it just seems regal. Color, I'm gonna go for like a bluish green because I always like bluish. There's no white or black on this scale right now. So I'm gonna go for a bluish green, like at 112 there. Leave everything on, cold, temperate, arid. So you can customize the map, but we picked a, a tropical map, so it should be mostly tropical, but it's, it's procedurally generated. Now let's go ahead and play the game and get this started. So I'm going to explain how this game pretty much works and uh, the basics of what you should be doing when you start up, but overall this is a very slow game. It's meant to be played slowly over the course of days and in the persistent world even like weeks and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to turn off tutorial because I've done the tutorial myself and I know the basics. Greetings Gimzak. After living as nomad since the dawn of times... By the way, there's some the developer Ronchan, English is not his first language, so we'll, we'll, we'll fix that later on. <laughs> it's not important right now. Uh, dawn of times, living of hunting and gathering. Your primitive tribe has finally stumbled upon a region that seemed worthy of renouncing their nomadic ways. Uh, the time has come to settle down and build something significant to resist the test of time, and they have chosen you to lead them. This seems to be a decent region to do so, but maybe it's worth continuing your journey to find better lands, not advice for new players. Uh, the decision is yours. So I'm gonna go through what's intended. So this is the starting region. Looks like we did get a tropical region. Yes, love it. Uh, so this is a world map, right? This is the world map. Uh, but this is sort of a mix of civilization and a city builder. So, for example, uh, we can set the orders here to settle, and we're gonna take all of our starting units, which is basically uh, adult workers, uh, female breeders, children, and old pigs. Old pigs... I don't, I don't know if old pigs work. Uh, probably not. But as tradition on this channel, Dwellmend will be our starting city. There we go, founding a new city and an error just happened, but I think it's fine, right? I think it's fine. An error just happened. <laughs> so there are some errors. I don't think you saw that, but it's uh, sent this, it unmaximized my screen here. Luckily, it's not a fatal error. We can keep going. Uh, now let's go into Dwellment now that we've settled this region and have a look at well, what we've got. The starting region always has all the resources that you need to get started, really. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we're gonna establish a small village in this video, and uh, I'll show you the ropes of just basically how the game plays and how it advances, and some of the very interesting complexities that set this apart from some of the other city builders. Especially this kind of city builder. Ooh, there we go, we're on the coast. Our newly settled tribe urgently needs fresh water, yes, and here we go. This is our starting region, you can see it's loading in, and just so you know, when you first start up a game and load in a region, currently it lags like hell. It lags like hell. <laughs> um, but as the game loads in and things start going a little bit better, it smooths out. So you can see it's very laggy right now, but uh, I love the tropical region. Let's zoom in a bit. You can zoom into this level. And these are slums, right? These are slum buildings. And one thing that, that you need to know is if there are slums, it means you don't have enough houses. It doesn't have enough houses. So we're gonna, we can't build houses yet because we haven't researched the technology for houses. So we're just gonna go ahead and get down a water collector for now, which I guess I'll just stick right here. There we go. See, the, the frame rate is starting to smooth out a bit here. We're gonna get water and we need to find some food, and a group of nomads arrived in our region. Oh, this is an, an event which we are not prepared for. <laughs> um, nomads arrived in the region, so we could take them in, but we'll be attacked. There is military in this game, but uh, we don't have any military setups, so capture the fugitives and offer them justice with the pursuers for rewards. Uh, so I can't fight off 10 foreign warriors, so I'm just gonna have to do the dishonorable thing and capture them and give them to the pursuers. And we get some loot, which should be some resources. So we just got some resources there. So basically we need to get some hunting going, some uh, gathering going and all of that. So production buildings. Let's get a hunter thing down. You can see that the resources are marked on the map. When I first started playing this game, the resources weren't marked and I had to scan the map looking for these little birds. 
but we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, so we're gonna hunt these things. So we'll get a hunter down. And let's see, what can we gather on this map? Ah, there we go. We've got... what is that? Rice? I'm not too sure. Uh, oh, we got some bananas over there. We've got whatever these things are here. Uh, what's the max we can get? 0.81, I think? Yeah, 0.81 seems to be the max for here. So I'm gonna build a gathering building there. These things are... We'll find out when that's done building. And these are just all the sort of starting quests. So we've got water for the tribe. We've created our first settlement. These starting quests sort of tell us how to get things going. Now, some of the interesting things. So I would say one of the most confusing points of this game right now is the user interface. It's very confusing. Look at this. If you've never seen this before, you have no idea what this is telling you. No idea. But if you, based on my experience, you basically need to look at a few things. First of all, this right here, inactives, which is unemployment. How, many, how much population is available for new jobs? And growth. Growth, as long as it's plus, it's generally doing, doing okay. But this game gets very, very complex and complicated as you go along. So there's social requirements and all sorts of things. You can see they actually have sort of a, a Maslow's hierarchy of needs here. You can see it starts out at the, the vital needs, which are food and water, secondary needs, which are furnishings, clothing, and social access, uh, tertiary needs, which are alcohol and entertainment. So this is not exactly Maslow's, okay? Tertiary is alcohol and entertainment, and quaternary needs is luxury access and pleasure foods access. So starting out, we get the vital needs down. That affects growth, you can see that. And there's even interesting things like as the, the, as the average intelligence of your population goes up, the birth rate goes down, which is how it actually works in the real world. Uh, so that it's got lots of the sort of deep little technical simulation aspects. So let's see, uh, tools. So we have to do uh, get some tool making going. So under production, we can collect flint like this. So we'll get down like a couple flint collectors. That's fine. And we can get it down a couple tool makers, which we can just put like that. And I think uh, three flint collectors will probably be good. 1.2 is the... 1.2 is the max, right? Yeah, we'll put another flint collector there. So three flint collectors and two tool makers to get tools going. Tools are used to build things like houses and stuff. Oh, <clears throat> oh excuse me. Jim Benninger. Benninger? Just subscribe to Twitch Prime. Thank you so much, Jim. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying it. We're checking out a new game here. So currently, yeah, we just need to produce tools. Uh, we've done the hunting mission. We've done the gathering mission. So we can get rid of those. So once we get tools going, we can actually start using that to build certain things. But currently, we, you can see we don't have the tech for most things. And the housing, we've only got that. For production, we've pretty much built everything we can. But getting these up, you can see we can hire and fire employees here and checking our employment we still have five inactives three inactives zero available jobs three inactives the tool makers are now going and you can check your resources here you can see here we're currently producing 3.6 flint which is being completely used by the industry turning it into 1.8 hammers uh, and that number is multiplied by a measure of time by the way just to note, there is no speed up or slow down button in this game. This is meant to be a multiplayer game, uh, and it's it's slow, relaxed pace. You don't have to rush through things. And also, when I mentioned military earlier, military is automated. So, uh, in my experience, we did some testing in multiplayer games, and if you play like with people all over the map, all over the world, um, ping can be up to like 500. I connected to someone in. in uh, on the other side of the planet, which would have been Western or Eastern United States. Western United States, I think. Uh, other side of the planet from me, we had 500 ping and it was not an issue because micro is not a problem here because military is automated. 
Uh, let's see. Wood. Ah, yes, we need to collect some wood. I forgot about that. Production woodcutter. So I can put down a couple woodcutters here. 0.5 is sort of the max. Can I get... Where's the other trees? Uh, ah, I can put another one over here. 0.5, so a couple of woodcutters. We'll get those going, and that should... We've only got three inactives and a woodcutter takes two, so we'll have one position open as our population slowly grows. Okay, so yeah, looking at this, this is an important tab, but at the start, just look at here, you know, how many inactives you have, basically the employment tab here and the growth tab. Everything else ignore for now. It's not, it's not too important. Because if you look at some certain things, like if you look at growth and piglets, you'll actually see how the piglets are uh, growing um, and how many of these piglets can we have 49 we're gonna have 194 births and Hostile barbarians oh get military going yes uh, you can see uh, we have this many births this many lost to sickness this many lost to murders and this many reaching adulthood and you can see here uh, every three minutes it updates it says right there so now we got to start a little bit of military so we can start a new formation, which I'm going to place right here. And there's two kinds of military in this game. There's two kinds of military. Uh, army and militia. Militia are sort of local piglets, uh, local pigs, or porcos as they're called in this game, which are armed, but they only become soldiers when you become attacked, when, you're, when you get attacked. And you cannot move these around the world map, whereas army... Uh, they are permanently taken out of your worker pool to turn into soldiers, but you can send them around the map. And we'll get to that in a bit. But we're going to set down a militia first. Dwellmen's giants, sure thing. And we're going to get 10 assigned as melee units for warriors. Recruit. There we go. So we have some militia, but it does not take it out of the population or the employees. Is there a zoom function? Yes, you can zoom in. You can zoom out to here, and you can zoom in to here. Sort of uh, max zoom in looks nice. It, it looks good, uh, but I like to zoom one out, just so we can see a bit more. Uh, and is there, Lala Kisus asks, is there a local multiplayer option or is it on online only? At the moment, it's online only. But uh, because, as I mentioned before, there's no micro, ping and, and latency to each other doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter too much. So defending the tribe, right. We also have to do, use the strategic tool to assign a new defensive zone. So I'm gonna say this area here is a defensive zone. So it lags a bit there. <laughs> okay, there we go. And we've got a defensive zone. So our militia will prioritize defending this area uh, in the case of an attack. Done. And mission complete wood, mission complete tools, defending the tribe done. And there we go. New ideas and knowledge. This is how, this is an interesting way of dealing with the tech tree. So you don't just have a tech tree which you then click on. I want to research this. You have to do certain things that inspire your population to come up with ideas. And when they have an idea, you then research that idea to get a, a, a knowledge, right? So here, uh, it gives a little bit of story behind it. And the first idea they have is sedentism, which is stop moving around, let's just stay here for a while, right? Sedentary life. And it puts a little story behind it, you know, sitting around a fire and all of that. So here's the next tab that you got, kind of got to look at. The culture tab, where you can research things. <clears throat> Excuse me. So sedentism is the first tech we can get and you have to assign people who work in that field to research it. So farmers, so we don't really have farmers now, but we put down those gatherers to get the... Actually, what, what were we collecting? We put down these gatherers which are now producing beans. They're beans. Uh, by the way, do we have more... One available job? I'd actually like to build one more gathering camp because we had bananas over here. We can... Is 0.9 the max? I think 0.9 is the max for bananas. So I'm gonna put one more gatherer here so we can gather up bananas as well. 
So those people who work in these gathering things count as farmers. So we have three farmers here. And I'm going to start researching this. Oh yeah, you see there's some graphical glitches here and there. Don't mind those. Don't mind those. I would say this is alpha going into closed beta. Um, so we can add one farmer and it's going to say it takes this long and it's going to cost only knowledge space, which we currently have 35. Start the project. And we can always add another farmer. And now it's going to take less time, 50 seconds. But these farmers are now going to be not as efficient. They're not going to be really working we, because we've assigned them to a research project. So now we wait 50 seconds and actually we, we don't really have to wait 50 seconds. More asylum seekers? Oh, okay, we can show off some military then. Uh, eight families arrive in the region and warriors will appear. So we now have a militia. 10 warriors, which should be able to fit, fight them off. So before, we captured them and got the free loot. This time, we're going to fight off the military. So now you get to see some military. You can see it's all automated, hands off. And military is going to start coming in here once it loads in properly. Here we go. So we have this. 10 warriors, local. This region is under attack. There goes our troops. And they are coming from... It must be from the... There they are. So these barbarians are now attacking. And it looks like they've got 10 as well. So hopefully we can win this. Hopefully we can win this. It's 10v10. Um, I hope we can win this. <laughs> It'll be a bit of a shame if, uh, if we lose the game right here. This game can be a little brutal. This game can be a little brutal. Map size could be bigger, to be honest. Uh, you can expand to new regions, don't worry. Uh, oh, and we just got sedentary. Okay, we gotta build our first house. But you see, military is all automated. Hands off. So this is why latency and lag don't matter too much in multiplayer games. And also on persistent worlds, on persistent uh, games, you don't have to be there to defend your city. You can set up your defenses, set up your troops. We lost. Well, the enemy won. Uh, and it depends what they want to do with this game. What, what do they do... Did we defend it? Did we defend it? Maybe, maybe it was just a vid visual glitch. Maybe it was just a visual glitch. I think. <laughs> maybe they, because they were warriors and we only had untrained militia. Yeah. Uh, though there's, there's a bit of a glitch here. The interface is not coming back. Let me, let me just try reload the region. By the way, uh, who said the map could be bigger? Uh, yeah. So you see here, this is the, the whole world map, and it's a bit dark right now, I think there's a visual glitch going on. You can actually like jump into... Uh... Oh no, we actually lost, we lost. We lost the game. <laughs> we lost the game. They've, you see, they've con we don't have vision of this, we, we've lost. We've actually lost. Uh, lesson learned, avoid military early on. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do now is uh, I, I just have to quit out of this because going back to the main menu actually uh, is a little crashy right now. So let me do this. I'm going to load up a game I've done before. So you've, you've seen how to, to start up the game. Okay, so we lost that game. We lost that game. Uh, so let me load up into a map I've been playing on for a few hours. So you can see how the, the game pro sort of progresses and all of that. Uh, Max, uh, Max in chat says, this looks like a mobile game. It, it's, it's got some sort of elements to it, like not having micro on the military, but based on mobile city builders, it's, uh, it's a lot more 
complex and deep. So here's a, a map that I have been playing for a little while. Another tropical map. I love the, the tropical map with it. Uh, and also, yeah, Max, if you're saying this looks like a mobile game because of the art style, uh, I mean, you could say Caesar 3 looks like a mobile game. The only reason, I mean, <laughs> you can't just judge it based on the art style. Um, and also, the reason why this can't be a mobile game is because there's so many buttons, so many menus and all of that, and you, you need a mouse and keyboard to control all of this. Anyway, here's a map that's slightly more developed. So, picking up where we left off just now, when you research sedentism, you get the ability to build houses. And again, don't mind the lag, it's just sort of loading in here. So, you can build houses like this, and just sort of... Uh, I'm gonna expand my town a little bit down this way. You see I've been building on this peninsula, and you can see we've gone a little bit further. We've got the technology for digging wells, so we get more water supply. We've got this, a forum, which was very expensive to build. We needed 30 stone. We needed to mine stone to get this. And that sort of adds a social resource, a community resource to the, to the game, which starts fulfilling, you know, the, the other tertiary needs to things. The secondary needs, rather, because if we look at the population, you can see population here is 257. Uh, under needs of things, you can see there's social access for piglets, no, for lumberjacks is 100%. And you can see we're getting a bit of furniture, a bit of clothing maybe, can't quite remember. So this is like a couple hours into the game, and you can see I've sort of built like fisheries and mining and clay collection things, clay exploitation there, we've got this fisher pig right there. So we've got all of that going. But one main thing I have to show off now is actual military. I'm going to create a new formation. So let's create a new formation, but this time it's going to be an army. The Devil's Own? Sure. We're going to call it, uh, we're going to make an army, and it's going to be 10 melee units. So we could have javelineers as a range unit, later on there'll be mounted units, but javelins without melee is going to be bad. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's back out of there. New formation. The cloud punches, okay. Let's go melee. Oh, we don't have enough resources to create... I'm short on wood. <laughs> so we need some wood to actually get things going. But I guess one one military should be fine. Uh, generally, you don't want to create an army with just one guy because it's going to be bad, but I'm going to create a troop with just one guy. Recruit. So we have one soldier. One soldier. Vashir. Vashir, thank you so much. Just gave a thousand bits in chat there. Vashir, I really do appreciate it. Um, but this is going to be slightly okay because we've already sort of explored the local region on our world map. <clears throat> ah. So, we now have... Uh, there we go. The... what are they called? The Accelers. The Accelers. So you can actually, with an army, move around the world map. Right? You can settle on new regions uh, and you see once I go here, you can actually... Where, wherever you have vision, so like around Dwellmend we have vision here, I can click on here and actually look at a neighboring region. Right? We can look at a neighboring region. So even though, uh, I think someone said the, the map looked a bit small, that's just one region on the world map. You can settle on any region in the world map, well, except for water tiles, I guess. Ah. And, uh, Vashir. You don't know what happened to your sub? Vashir, how did you subscribe before? And Pseudonim... How do you... Pseudonim? Just subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you, Pseudonim. It's spelled N-Y-M-N. -N. So this is a neighboring region, which is not tropical, by the way. We're, we're just sort of on the edge of the tropics with our current region. So this is sort of more of a... sort of like a plains sort of... what's it called? What's, what's the terrain in Italy? They have these trees. That, that kind of climate and terrain. And there's African terrain and all sorts of things. And you can see the, these white cliffs are actually resources and stuff like that. We can mine them out. 
Uh, so this is another whole map, another whole map, just by itself. Look at that. So the, the maps you can settle on and build on is actually huge. It's huge. But uh, let's go back to our excellers here. Now, one thing you can do with an army besides exploring, you can see I've actually explored. We can see there's some uh, uh, barbarian camps here because this is a solo solo game. There's no one else on this map. Uh, we've got some barbarians over there, barbarians over there. But you see these animals here. We can actually hunt them. Usually, one guy would not be able to hunt them. But you see here, if I look at this, there's three cows here. And there's also five... What are these? Buffaloes. So I'm gonna go for the three cows. And I've only got one guy. And I don't know if this is gonna be able to do anything, but we can set him to hunt. And he's gonna start hunting this cow. Now he might die. I expect him to die. <laughs> uh, can one guy kill three cows? I really don't know. I don't know if one guy can kill three cows. But also, just so you know, if you explore, if you go onto a tile that has never been visited before, there are random events. Sometimes you find like, oh, there's a story of... Uh, we found some survivors of something, or we found uh, some people who didn't survive and we get to loot their bodies. So there, there's sort of like every tile is sort of like a goodie hut in civilization. Every tile is like a goodie hut. But here we go, we're, we're hunting that. And meanwhile, while that's going on, we can just sort of go back into our... Go back into our city here. Pseudonym says the pigs are sentient, but the cows aren't. Zach think. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's got sort of um, slightly Disney rules to it, I guess, you know. What's the difference between Goofy and Pluto? Hmm. Uh, apparently the answer is one wears clothes. So animals which wear clothes are sentient and humanoid and stuff like that. Um, animals that don't wear clothes are considered animals in, in the media. That's the difference between Goofy and Pluto. I think I heard that in an interview somewhere. So yeah. So while that's going on, we can like look around our city, build things, check how things are going. Are we getting... Uh, we have four available jobs. Growth is 5.4, so that's all okay. Let me just move a window here. And do that, do this, do that. And this is how basically you're supposed to play the game. Go set something off, go do something here. Uh, currently, it's a little tricky because there are sort of optimization issues jumping in and out of regions, but it's not too bad. Just that first loading in is sort of, uh, sort of tricky. But I like, how, I like how this is going along. Because we don't use the walker system, you can build cities pretty much however you like. And also, if you look at my knowledges here, you can see there's all sorts of knowledges you can have. Domesticate dogs, agriculture, wheel, property, well digging, pottery, clothing, stone building, javelin, spear fishing, sedentism. Sedentism being the first one. And you can see I've actually reached the point where I can actually plant farms. So if I wanted to plant, we're harvesting rice here. We can actually plant farms if I build, uh, if I have a spare rice resource, which I could stockpile or I could, and I also need uh, some tools. So uh, you can see the tool makers actually produce hammers and hoes right now. But meanwhile, our hunting expedition should either have succeeded or that guy is dead. Let's see what happened. He totally died. He killed a cow, but he died. That is unfortunate. <laughs> I haven't been stockpiling wood very well either. Uh, so let's see if we can get a few more soldiers. There's only two cows left. I'm sure we can kill two cows. We just need a few more soldiers. Five guys should do it. Let's start stockpiling some wood. And Thomasmo says the developers are adding according to feedback by testers like me, like Gamer Zach. Yeah, um, he, he's currently got a Reddit going. Uh, if you want to know about the game mostly, he's most active on, on like Discord. He's got a, his own Discord channel. How much wood do we have right now? Two? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maintain stock of five. So now everything's going to stop using wood. And let's make sure our, our lumberjacks are fully staffed here. Two, 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 two. Okay. 
And just to make sure, what, what buildings are using wood? Have all of these stopped using wood? We have some pottery. Let's just stop pottery production because it's using wood as fuel right now. So you can see you can sleep these buildings. Let's zoom in a bit to, to mitigate some of the, the frame drops. But there we go, we're now getting 1.4 wood. So we've lost that army, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to stockpile wood for a while. And uh, Zong Zen says the UI looks really fiddly at the moment. Yeah, I would say that the trickiest thing and probably the weakest aspect of the game right now is the UI. The UI is sort of fiddly. He, he's sort of fixed up the on-screen in-game UI, so this is okay. These menus here make sense. These are very easy to use. But then there's some sort of very programmer UI. And what I mean by programmer UI is that um, it's very, very functional, but it's not as intuitive as it should be. So like this destruction tool, looks like there's a destruction tool, but if you right click it, there's actually options for destruction tool. That, this is a very programmer thing, <laughs> very programmer thing. Um, and also like looking at this region menu, this uh, I would say needs to be cleaned up. Uh, he's having trouble with some of the fonts apparently, but yeah. I do have to reiterate, this is a solo project. This is all made by one guy uh, over the past five years on and off and uh, two years, past two years full time. So you can see that large houses, we could upgrade these, but it's gonna cost wood, so let's not. We're currently saving up wood. A little while longer, we, we should have five wood. <clears throat> so we can get enough Porco soldiers to uh, kill two cows. Five should be able to, five should be able to kill the cows. I can't believe we lost the last map. It was 10v10, but our militia stood no chances against those barbarians. Uh, but that was a good demonstration of how the game is, is brutal at times, especially in multiplayer, you can imagine, just someone rushes military sends like 10, 20 guys over your way, wipes you out. You can't defend yourself. So you have to be more careful in, in multiplayer. Uh, Robin Sonar says, all from one guy, that's amazing. I think the, the only thing he didn't do is the music, uh, which he hired someone to do. But as far as I know, the rest is pretty much him. Because the, the developer, Ronchon, used to be a developer for Total War, I think? He's an ex-Total War developer. And I think he was uh, in an environment artist or something like that. So he can do this. I think, I think. Is that correct? Some of you should know. But I, I think he was an ex-environment artist for Total War. He worked on Rome 2. There we go, Tomazmi. Tomazmo, sorry. Thomas, I think. Uh, to make cities in Rome 2. There we go. Anyway, we have four wood now, just need a little bit more, and we'll get five soldiers. I think that the way it looks is really good. Uh, and Max earlier said it looks like a mobile game. S some elements maybe, but you don't really get this kind of detail and this kind of scale. Like, if you zoom in here, like, if this was the game, and this was what you were looking at, yeah, okay, maybe you could say it looks like a mobile game. But considering the ma an individual map is not even this big, this is like... It's actually huge. Like the, the larger, like this is like a large map on Caesar 3 or Pharaoh, right? Maybe not a huge map, but a large map. So it's pretty big. But considering how each tile on the world map is a region like this, the game is actually huge. Ibalki says it seems laggy. Yeah, there's optimization issues. Again, I'm gonna reiterate, I would call this the end of alpha going into a closed beta. So, you can see there's actually some things that are just not done. I think um, you can see here, animal capture doesn't have a description. <laughs> uh, the earlier texts do, uh, but we're, we're coming out of alpha here. Uh, anyway, we have five pieces of wood. Let's try... Oh, what was that? There was a message. I think I clicked through it. There's an events log here. New events. Did I... I think I accidentally closed something. Oh well, that's fine. Let's make a new army. This time, the armored farmers, sure. Uh, we're gonna go for 
five warriors. Let's recruit you. And that is taking out of our population. So see this two available jobs. It should go to seven soon, I think. Unless we actually had a lot of extra people. Oh, we're actually under attack. That's that's what I <laughs> that's what I skipped over just now. We're actually being attacked by barbarians. So good thing I just recruited five extra soldiers. So this is going to be another invasion. But we have a militia of ten local warriors, and we also just recruited five warriors in an army. So we've got fifteen soldiers. The region is under attack. So hopefully, there they are. How many are attacking? One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen? Uh, we might just... Was it tw is it 20? We might lose you. <laughs> we might just lose again. Ah, uh, you can't mess around in this game. Well, let, let's, let's the bat let the battle go through. You can see here our militia. And uh, five soldiers. <laughs> Are we like a Stone Age tribe right now? We're just coming out of the Stone Age. We're just coming out of the Stone Age. I think it's supposed to go up to somewhat the Medieval Age. 20? Yeah. I think Cha-Ching uh, caught it. There's, there's 20 invaders here. And we've only got five, uh, 15 defenders. And 10 of those are militia. So I think this is GG. Uh, I think we, we, we are totally getting wrecked here. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, they, they lost quickly. You definitely need a standing army in this game. Wow, we killed like seven of them. We killed like seven. Now, are they actually here? Are they raiding? They're raiding, so they're not here to conquer. So they're gonna raid our resources and then leave. So it's not GG. Yes, yes, they're just here to raid. They're not here to conquer. So we're gonna watch them raid. <laughs> uh, how, does this, how does this compare to Pharaoh Caesar Emperor? It's a different game. It just doesn't use the Walker system, so it's a different game. Pharaoh, Caesar, Emperor, Zeus, use walker systems. It's, it's different. But it's in the same vein. But it is still a different game. So they're going to go to my stocks, I think, to, to raid. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> Cha-Ching says rape and pillage. Yes. Ah, uh, well, it's either rape and pillage or everyone dies. So <laughs> they're here to raid and not to, to pillage, so I think they're just going to take our resources. And then they, they should leave, right? I've never actually been raided. Can you speed up the game? No, you can't. This is meant to be a slow game. So they took a bunch of stuff and now they're gonna they're gonna leave. So thankfully, thankfully, they were not here to conquer because they they, they would have won. They would have won. So I think you need like a standing army of like 20, 30 people. Porcos. Right? You need a standing army. So let's just let them leave. You can see all of our villages are hiding in their huts. And then they gotta walk off. <laughs> uh, they're paying the iron price, not the gold price, yeah. So that's gonna be a bit brutal on our economy because we just lost 15 adults which could work. 10 of them which were actively working. Five were soldiers in an army, but we lost 10 militia which are 10 adult workers. So our buildings are gonna be a little understaffed after this. Ah. Uh. Off they go. By the way, later on in the game, you, you can build defenses like walls and gates and stuff like that. 
I hope there's a person named Crispy Bacon. That is something that I suggested. Currently, you can't click on individual pigs. There's no actual details about an individual pig, but uh, it's something that probably should. There should be a Steve the Capitulator. I'll guess Halo. Steve the Capitulator needs to make it into the game. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, off the barbarians go. We killed seven of them, they killed 15 of us. Not a fair trade, and they raided our stocks. Oh. Battle is over. Bye. They should just despawn. I've never been raided. I, d I don't know what this is supposed to look like. There they go. Off they go. We got our city back. I think these numbers are wrong. I don't know what they've taken from us, but also let's check our population. See, 10 of it. Oh, we lost, we lost 10 militia. That is so bad. Well, <laughs> let, let's, let's um, prioritize wood production here. Uh, let's, Currently, there's, there's no priorities. That is something I have suggested. Let's get our wood back up so we can get those five soldiers and go kill those damn cows. I'm going to hunt those cows. I'm going to hunt those cows. Because early game, hunting is really useful. You can see we're running out of meat. We actually need to go hunt to get more food. Uh, not having enough food sort of affects your growth rate. Um, this region does have some hunting spots. Like you can see here, I've, this is a level 2 hunter, so it only needs uh, 3 people to produce 1.3 meat, as opposed to over here, I have a level 1 hunter, which needs 4 people to do this. So upgrading buildings produces the same stuff, but with fewer employees. So that's always nice. Uh, we also have a ton of rice on this map. If you look at our rice production, we can produce quite a bit, but you see that ideally needed nine. We're currently producing three. We, we have to kind of get into farming. So until you can actually produce enough food on, your ma on the map itself, uh, you have to go world map hunting, you could say. And also it seems like, yeah, you can only produce one foreign. And someone earlier was asking, is this the Stone Age? Sort of. Sort of. This is, uh, yeah, sort of coming out of the Stone Age. Just about. You can see we've got tanneries, weapon makers, potters, tool makers. We're still using clubs, I think. And we're just getting into like social stuff. So there's that. Now, resources. Gonna wait a little bit more. And <laughs> our employment's gonna take another hit. Uh, eight available jobs. Once we get five wood, we'll, we'll go in there. <coughs> Go and kill those cows, shall we? There should be a war at some point between the cows and pigs, Pharaoh himself says. <laughs> uh, hmm. He did actually say that he might want to add other cultures and designs. And I'm not sure whether he means like having the porcos, having like different sort of cultural inspirations, like being Asian or being Greek or things like that, or actually having other races. Like having cow races and stuff. I'm not sure. Currently it's just pigs though. Currently it's just pigs. Even the barbarians are pigs. So I think this updates... There we go. We've got five wood now. Let's go ahead and get a new formation. Uh, let's drop down an army. The holy pigs. Okay. We're gonna get five soldiers recruit. And that should... There we go. Kill our available jobs. Uh, so we've got... The holy pigs, let's go to the world map and let's go hunt. Let's go hunt. So this is again, it's a fiddly thing from a UI perspective, but it makes sense gameplay wise. So let's say we're looking at this. These things spawn randomly, by the way. Uh, we, when I started this game, we had two things to hunt. These two are new spawns. So there's two porcos here. They have an, uh, or two cows here. Meat of 46, 11 leather. And depending on how many soldiers you have, it actually we can only hold 15, see? So, if we really wanted to hunt this properly, we needed more soldiers, because we can only hold 15. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna head over there. 
and hunt there. Five guys should be able to kill two cows with minimal losses. <laughs> because earlier we sent one guy, we killed one cow, but we lost the guy. Uh, so there's just no one to carry the loot, really. Uh, Remnant Mine says, just tuning in, welcome to the stream. We're playing Emir, an upcoming 4X city builder with pigs and clothes. Would it be possible to have alliances or would it be every creature for itself? There is a diplomacy thing. I don't think there's diplomacy with barbarians. We're currently at war with these guys, but we're not at war with these guys. Peace gets rights of passage, gets training. See, there is diplomacy. But uh, I don't think there's proper diplomacy with barbarians, only with other players. Yeah, I don't think I can do anything with this. But anyway, we're watching this go down. Oh, you can also zoom this out. So you see that? The world map is huge. Like, I'm scrolling around here. <laughs> it's, it, it's pretty big. It's pretty big, right? And when you imagine each one of these tiles is an entirely settleable region. And there we go. We actually won this time. We didn't lose anyone either. And we got 12 meat, 3 leather, because that's the most we can carry. Which sucks, considering they had 40 meat. But we're going to come back here. Bring these guys back. And here's, here's a UI, I would say, not intuitive UI thing. You actually have an inventory here, and you've got to click on the meat and unload. And we can unload it into the region. And when we go back into the region, you can unload from inside the region as well. But I'm just showing that off because it's a little easier from there, from the world map. Uh, you'll see that just now we had like three meat. And we just brought back 12, so we should have 14 or 15. We might have eaten some since. Ah. And what is the current aim in the game? The aim of this game is to advance and earn victory points, which is something I should just about talk about now before we wrap up this demonstration of Emir. So we just brought back meat. That's how you hunt. Early game, you can see we got 12 now. We brought some of that back, brought back some leather as well. And we're now producing wood. We should probably activate... No, we actually... 12 jobs available. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the objective of the game is to earn victory points. And the first player to get to, I think, 100 victory points wins the game. See, you need a total of 100. And this number is in comparison to other players, right? Can you walk multiple rounds to get the meat? Uh, I don't think so. Just, just before we go into victory points, let me just double check. I don't think so. If I go back there... You could settle with five warriors, but your, your town would be rubbish. I don't think you can go back and pick up the meat. Yeah. So you, you do need to go hunting with a large enough army. So you see here, if you're planning on hunting these, you don't always kill all of them in one go, but if you're planning on hunting these, look at the inventory. This has 130 meat and 32 leather. So that is 150, no, 162 units of resources. So you want to go hunting with a large enough army. You want to go hunting with a large enough army to actually carry most of it, at least. So that's something you, you have to be aware of. But final point we need to talk about the actual objective of the game victory points victory points there are certain victory missions and certain achievements that you can achieve and it is in comparison to other players so if it's just you in the game it's quite easy to to build up the victory points but if you're competing with others then it becomes a lot harder so if i click on this victory points here let me just zoom in here because zooming in reduces some of the lag We'll center on our forum there, looking at victory points here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we have five victory points from uh, just our nation victory points. And also these here are victory quests. So if I were to look at this first discoverer, we should be the first to master this knowledge, um, which is the knowledge of privileges. So as we gain ideas and research new technologies, there's going to be one idea, which is privileges. So if we research that first, we'll get five points, right? There's also here the most educated city. Total population intelligence superior to 30. Currently it's 22. Intelligence goes up 
as you provide better resources and better facilities and fulfill the needs, right? Uh, going to the secondary and tertiary needs. So currently it's 20. And also, as the average intelligence goes up, research happens faster, so that helps. And largest territory, own three or more regions. Currently we only have one. So uh, having three or more regions slash the largest will get us another bunch of victory points. So as you go through those quests, you get the victory points. When you reach 100, you win the game, right? But again, like I said, having the largest territory, it's gonna be competing with other people. Barbarians don't count. So if you have like a game with a hundred people in it on like a persistent 24 seven server, the game could last weeks, right? This game can go on for weeks, but if it's a small group of people, like four or five people playing together, the game probably would last a week or a few days, depending on how much you play. So that's the, the main objective of the game of how you actually end the game. There, there are victory conditions here. It's not an endless game. And that's our general score there. And yeah, see, I've done one victory mission there, which gave me the five points for that. But besides that, I don't actually have anything giving me victory points. So that's how you win the game. So before I wrap up, I'd love to ask you guys, do you guys have any questions that you're interested in or something you want me to check out or show? Ask in chat, I'll, I'll have a look. And because I think I've pretty much gotten over all the basics, um, the complexities. There's also some, a certain thing to note. If you look at resources here, you can see there's like a, a coin later on. I'm not at the point yet when it actually starts to have money. When, once there's actually money in the game, resources have sort of a, a organic currency depending on supply and demand. Um, there is a wealth. You have to be careful so that certain industries don't become completely dominant. Uh, someone says build something. Uh, let's build a house. There we go. We can build a house. And you see it takes a certain amount of time. Self-constructing. We'll get another house. Because we, you can see there's some slums here and there. Minus five health, which is not good. And also I mentioned intelligence earlier. Intelligence is sort of determined by this, fulfilling these needs, their health, life quality, boost their intelligence. Very good. How does supply work in terms of water and pottery? Is, is it just stacks that get consumed? Yes, currently um, it doesn't matter where on the map things are placed and there's no walker system. So you see the flint collectors are over here and it's just adding to the flint supply and the tool makers are over here. Uh, and they're using the flint to turn into hammers, right? So it doesn't matter where you place it, um, as far as I can tell. Distance doesn't matter. Uh, and yeah, it's just a stack that gets consumed. You see that? Why am I building? So how you build things is just mainly aesthetics at this point, except, except uh, you have to consider military, right? So if you were planning to build walls and stuff, this map is actually very difficult to defend because troops can technically cross water. They can build like a little barge and cross water. It's slow. Um, but a map which is cliffs, like with a hill in the middle, it's much easier to build a wall around. So how you build your city would be, you know, like where you put the, the storage and stockpile. If they're coming in to raid, you need to defend this. If they're coming to conquer, they're, they're going to kill your military, stuff like that. The, the, on the military side, you've got to think of city layout. But besides that, not so much. It's mainly aesthetics. Uh, can I show the city's UI where it shows all the needs and stuff again? This, the region menu. So this is very confusing. You can see there's economy, which you don't have to consider until money is involved. Administration, governments, I'm not really at that point. You can see conflict, loyalty, culture, uh, employment, right? So because if you look at the government screen, there's not really forms of government yet. I haven't reached, really got to that point. I've got no policies to add, right? But there is the legitimacy of your rule, which does come into play later. You know, people can get unhappy if they don't think you should be leader. So you see the game gets much more complex as we go along much more complex. What are the other pigs next to the unemployed? So this, this is showing how many people are working in each. So these are hunters, farmers, sailors, miners. So those are all just employed. It sort of changes with piglets. Piglets do not work. 
So you see, although I have a large population, 142 are kids, so they don't count towards employment. Uh, old pigs, I think, don't work either, and sows are sort of determining the breeding rate. You can see here piglet to sow influence, so because we have twice as many piglets as sows, we uh, the birth rate is reduced, right? So if we l have s few children, lots of uh, sows, then the birth rate will go back up until it's just sort of being controlled here, right? Hope this game won't have a population bug. No, not, as far as I can tell, there's no population bug so far. So you see one, uh, I think one piglet just grew up into an adult. It becomes an inactive and then he'll find a job among the industries. There we go. So he became a hunter. There we go. And reduces the employment there. So this, this is a very confusing window, but basically you're looking at here and here. Just this middle bar here, it's sort of the most important. Like if you click on certain things here, you can see the satisfaction, which is good. And also you can see the uh, support for military. So I could support 27. This, this is sort of an indicator of how big your military should be, right? So it says here, I basically should have 27 soldiers. Um, above that, growth rate is impacted. Is there a god sim? Uh, uh, current, currently, there's no official religion. There is a conflict system. So you see here, it determines murders and authorities and based on policies and services and stuff like that. So it's a conflict right now, but I don't think there's any religion mechanic as of right now. It's sort of, he's considered it, but he wants to refine the existing systems before adding something like that. Right? Any other questions? Also, if you are watching this on YouTube, just ask questions down below or check out the, the Discord, my Discord as well, discord.gg slash gamerzack. But Emir has its own Discord. Um, but yeah, that's basically the game. I think that's a good look. That's a good encounter of Emir. Hopefully that explains basically how it is right now. Uh, again, I'm going to reiterate, I consider this towards the end of an alpha, going into a closed beta. Uh, open beta is basically going to be early access on Steam. How far in pig story does this game go? Uh, up until the medieval age. If you check the Steam page, there's actually like, pictures and screenshots of uh, like more developed cities. Uh, right now, this is... See, I've only got level two houses. I'm just going to upgrade one house here for reference. Uh, let's pick this house. Upgrade. So that's going to take a minute, 15 seconds to upgrade this house to a large house, and it looks like that. But you can still see it's very caveman age, but it goes up until medieval age, right? You get stone walls and, and stuff like that. And speaking of stone walls, we can actually build certain things, I think. Stairs, fences, like I could build a fence, but it's just aesthetic. It's not a wall yet, I think. But it could be cool if I, for example, for decoration did something like this. You just have little fences sort of put around for decoration. This is still a city builder. You want it to look good. Ah. <clears throat> Zong Zen says, is this game considered halal? Well, unless you're eating the game. Uh, is it kosher either? Unless you're gonna eat the game. I think it's fine. <laughs> Whether it's halal or kosher, um, yeah, I think unless you actually take your computer and eat, eat Emir, I'm gonna say it's fine. I'm gonna say it's fine. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I think that's a good look at Emir. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask me or the developer on, on Discord. Uh, yeah. Pretty good look. Anyway, that's gonna be it for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in seeing more city building stuff, my Caesar 3 series is still going on. You can go check that out. Um, you can also check out Pharaoh, Zeus, and Emperor on my channel as well if you're interested in that. And also, just as a reminder, it is currently September on Twitch, which means uh, there's a discount to new subs. But also for everyone who has subscribed on Twitch, thank you so much. It's currently going into funding a new PC to stop this one from crashing. This one's been having crashing problems for a long, long time now. Uh, 
But yeah, that, that problem should be done soon, and then I can get back to playing other games as well. But I think you guys are enjoying Caesar 3. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!